The celebrations have been going on all weekend with parades and rallies across the nation, from California to Chicago to New York, and monuments have been lit up to mark the occasion as well, as we now begin our first full week in which same-sex marriage is legal in all 50 states. At the center of it all was one man, the lead plaintiff, James Obergefell. It made me feel more like an American, made me feel more equal. The road to the Supreme Court began right here in Massachusetts. Joining me now is the woman who wrote that decision, former Chief Justice of the SJC, Margaret Marshall. Good to see you. Thank you, Jim. Along with Senate President Stan Rosenberg, the first openly gay legislative leader in Massachusetts. Good to see you as well. Pleasure to be with you. Where were you when you heard this, and what was your immediate reaction, Justice Marshall? I was sitting at my computer, <laughs> waiting to see. Were you really sitting there for that purpose? Yes. Uh, I have to say, I thought it was going to come out on Monday, uh -huh. today because every issue involved, involving same-sex couples since Lawrence against Texas has been on the last day mm. of the term. I called it wrong. It tells you that you can never tell what a bunch of judges are going to do. <laughs> um, and I was doing what everybody does, which is waiting to see. And what was, your, what was the feeling, first feeling you had in your head and your body when it, you read well, it? Well, before I read it, I mean, just when I saw it, was an enormous sense of relief and also a little disappointment because I was hoping that we would have a 6-3 vote, which I think would have been so much better for this country, so much better for this so country. So where were you and what was your reaction? I was in the car Senate driving President? from Greenfield to Boston, Oof. and it came over social media, and uh, I felt totally elated and, and excited because I knew it started here in Massachusetts, and I had been uh, actually on a panel about a week or, I don't know, about a month after the uh, uh, situation got settled here in Massachusetts, and and I was asked how long is it going to take before it spreads across the country. That's my next question. What was Fifty the years, I said, oh. because I was thinking about you know race relations in America and, and the evolution of all of that. And the woman sitting next to me, who was an attorney, she said, "No, ten years." Well, I wish I had better because I'd bought her dinner this well, week. Don't go to Plainville because he was off by thirty-nine years. Would you have been off by thirty-nine years, Margaret Marshall, if I had asked you hmm. on November what was it, seventeenth? Was it what was the date? November of two thousand three. It was May the 17th, 2004. When the we yeah. wedding started. So I forget. So what would you have said if I'd asked you then? I don't know. And then I had a better sense because the next two Supreme Courts yeah. were New York and New Jersey, and they went the other way. You know, one of the things that drives me crazy about you is your humility. And I, I mean, <laughs> I'm serious. I've spoken to you probably a half dozen times sure. during the pendency of this. Is there a piece of you, even in private, that allows yourself to say, I, you, not me, was a critical player in this incredibly important movement in this country. There's no part of you that allows that to happen. Don't talk about what came before. I'm talking about you right now. I mean, you know me well enough to know that it's, it's very hard for me to say that me. I mean, I, I know Mary Bonato. I know her The argument. lawyer who argued in front of you yes. and the Supreme Court. And I've said, lawyers teach judges. She knew more about this, and she made me feel comfortable. Then I had three very brave colleagues very brave colleagues with very different political persuasions. Uh, three of us were appointed by Republican governors, Justice Glaney by a Democratic governor. And I mean, the one thing I will say about the Supreme Judicial Court is Justice Sussman, who wrote the lead dissent, mm -hmm. wonderful woman. She died very early of breast cancer. She and I worked so hard together. We disagreed on the law. We disagreed on the outcome to cut the acrimony. So she went through my opinion and said, that makes me feel uncomfortable. And I went through her opinion and said, that makes me feel uncomfortable. Do you think Justice Scalia should have done that with Justice Kennedy? I think Justice Scalia should have done that with Justice Kennedy. And I also think, though, in fairness to the chief, there's a piece of his opinion where he says, I know the majority say that they don't mean to demean those who have a different view, but they do. And then he quotes a sentence from Justice Kennedy's mm -hmm. opinion. I own feeling, take it out. Take it out. I'm with you. So do you think, when you heard that the other day, you had a th you've been a legislator forever, essentially. Is that a fair? That's that, not pretty fair. close. A fairly forever, long time. Yes. <laughs> you lived through, as a gay guy, you didn't come out to what, 2009 or something, but as a gay Wait. guy, lived through, and I was a lobbyist then, and I used the term loosely, some of the most vicious low-rent debates on Beacon Hill that one can possibly imagine. What was that like for you? Especially considering you didn't think this day was going to come it's for half a century. It's such a turnaround. And, and if the court, if those seven couples hadn't gone to get licenses and Mary Bonato and Glad hadn't gone to the court and the court 
hadn't read the Constitution and said the meaning is very clear and by a five to four vote say you've always been entitled to marriage rights, go forth, uh, we would not be at this date. But it started with a very small handful of legislators supporting the court's judgment. Mm -hmm. And by a th the end of a three and a half year long debate, we had over 150 of the 200 legislators voting to sustain the court's what? judgment. Do you that was up, phenomenal. Uh, you grew up in South Africa, right? And obviously under apartheid. Is there are there any parallels you can draw between that and this? Well, first of all, um, criminal. You know, if if you were gay in South Africa, it was criminal, as it has been in so many repressive countries. Mm -hmm. So, I think that informed my view more than anything else because. I knew about that. I knew what had happened to gay and lesbian peoples in Nazi Germany. So, so the fact that uh, sexual orientation has formed the basis, as you say, of some of the most awful, awful discrimination in, in contemporary times was not new to me. But as I've said before, I had never thought of people marrying. That's what the lawyers taught me. I just hadn't. I mean, how could I not have thought about it? Well, I didn't. Wait a second. You mean you didn't think about it until the case, the Goodrich case, is being argued in front yeah. of you? You hadn't thought about same-sex couples marrying. Had you? Well, yes, I. Well, a little, but well, not, I mean, not a huge. <laughs> well, I mean, no, I'm I, serious. You really, until the arguments were well, made in front of you. I was very familiar with discrimination in in employment and housing, but I I must have read the Vermont decision. Mm -hmm. And I know civil unions. Civil unions, yeah. and that's Chief Justice Amistoy. And because he was the Chief Justice, and I was the Chief Justice, uh, and we've always disagreed, and I respect his opinion. But by the time it came to the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court, nobody wanted civil unions. Nobody wanted civil unions. So where are we now? I, there are a lot of battles to be fought. I mean, one of the great signs of progress to me, and it may be small, is uh, the person who is going to preside at your wedding at some point. I know you're not going to tell us the date. We went through this the other day. I is, want to know who's marrying you. Is a you. woman. Who's marrying you? <laughs> she wants to know. You want to tell her? Uh, no, it's okay. The lieutenant governor. Oh, wonderful. Is going who to who was one of the sponsors so. of okay. a constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage. So that's progress. I, uh, yes. Opening hearts and minds okay. all along the way. So what's, I, 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 I don't want to rain on anyone's parade because Friday was one of the great days yeah. arguably in this country's history. There are a lot of hurdles still to be gotten over for lesbian and gay Americans, yeah. no? So uh, yes, and, and the next uh, frontier here in Massachusetts is that a couple of years ago uh, the law was changed to provide uh, non-discrimination protection for transgender and transsexual people, but it did not include access to public accommodations, which means now transgender people can be uh, not denied a job, but they can be denied the right to be served in a restaurant. And so that's the next frontier here in Massachusetts. And, and how ready do you think courts in this country are to deal with transgender Americans? Massachusetts, I don't think it'll have any problem with it. But I think there's another problem nationally, which, which I find more disturbing. First of all, let me make clear that we have, the state has authorized religious officials, a rabbi, a priest, a minister, an imam, whoever it is, to marry people. Nobody has ever suggested that they have to marry everyone. So certain religions don't allow uh, their priests or rabbis or in, to marry in, you know, mm -hmm. interfaith or you can't be divorced or whatever it is. So the notion that religious officials are going to have to perform these marriages is ridiculous. The bigger challenge, I think, is going to be in what I would call a public accommodation, public um, service area, where the claim now is if I uh, have a a flower shop, let me take the obvious, and I devoutly am opposed on religious grounds to same-sex marriage, do I have to sell flowers? That question was settled for race issues um, by the United States Supreme Court decades ago. And what people forget is the claim for racial discrimination had a religious mm -hmm. basis. And in cases like the Bob Jones case and so on and so forth, the Supreme Court and the race area said absolutely not. If you want to, uh, you know, run a motel or have a housing business or, you know, have a Coke counter or whatever it is, I don't care what your religious views are or how deeply you hold them. If it's public accommodation, it's open to everybody. 
I think that's where the next battle is coming. That's what I see. But for now, we can celebrate this oh, one. Oh, yes. Indeed. Senate President Rosenberg, good to see you. Thank Chief you. Justice Marshall. Thank you so much. We're responsible in great part for this. <laughs> she won't say it, I will. Good to see you both.